Knowledge is power. And this is powerful stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Week at 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with your host, Jen Solis. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230 or toll free. Toll free. 1-866-820-5528. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Jen Solis. Hi, welcome back, everybody. This is Jennifer Solis and with the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. I have Kurt Dukach to my right and Raymond Fletcher. Uh, Beach is on, still on vacation at the Burning Man. And burning the man. He's bur- burning the man. The, the man has been burnt. The man has been burnt. He's still there cleaning up. They're still cleaning up the moop. Ew. <laughs> All right, you guys. Uh, with the local news this week, we have North Las Vegas. The last two days of North Las Vegas are, are going on for them to be accepting applications. If you have an application in Apex, it's going to be much, much lighter than the application uh, anywhere else in uh, North Las Vegas proper. Um People better get down there, you know, today before it's too late. Because if you turn it in tomorrow and there's something missing, you can't add to your application. Uh, it didn't look too busy today. I think there were maybe like five or six people that I recognized, and they all had bankers boxes for like what two inch folders or something. <laughs> well, I figured, you know, the state you already had your application process and everything. So if you don't have your application in for any of the remainder. Of the municipalities, I mean, hey, that's your bad. That's true. And you know what? There has been some talk about the applications that have gone up to the state that have not been supported by a municipality, meaning that people just leapfrogged over the municipality, applied at the state, and are going to work their way backwards from there. How do you think that's going to work? I, I actually don't know, you know, but I don't blame them because the process that I witnessed the county go through was atrocious. I mean, you have six minutes to present your case. The public has three minutes to come support or oppose you. Then the commissioners had three minutes total to ask you questions. So, I mean, it's... Well, what about the situation of asking somebody for a state application, like, what, three and four weeks before the state application is even due? The municipalities ask for those applications. Wasn't that only the city of Las Vegas that did that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, city of Las Vegas doesn't know their uh, uh, backside from a hole in the wall. Oh, okay. Well, you know, the thing is with the with city of Las Vegas, and I, I re- really sincerely hope that it doesn't happen, is that it just looked like a bunch of confusion up at that meeting that you were at uh, last week. Looked? It was. It was. Because if anybody had read the rules and regulation, or even, I don't know, read the law, you'd have a basic concept of what's going on but unfortunately the chair of that meeting the mayor pro tem did didn't know what was going on and and to be an elected representative to have something as huge as medical cannabis coming into our community and you don't know what's going on with it you don't know what you can and can't do and the fact of the matter is you want to come back and review the applications the state has already approved no who 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 died and made you god well the thing is is that i think that the mayor pro tem that people need to understand the mayor pro tem is savros anthony and he's an ex-police officer so do you think that it's true confusion or do you think he was just adding confusion to the mix I honestly think it was true confusion. That's my personal opinion. So once again, the cops are confused. (laughs) Yeah, why would he want to be educated about something that he doesn't even want in the one in the city? Oh yeah, he did. He was just hit the nail on the head. He has been steadfast against medical marijuana in any way, shape, or form. That's true. Doing everything he can to make sure that he doesn't get it in his ward. That's true. So why would you pay attention to what's going on with something you disagree? I don't know, because it's your constitutional duty as an elected official. But hey, that's just me. 
Well, he did spend a lot of time uh, digging up some really, really old research and propaganda on it. So, yeah, like seventy <laughs> years old. It was probably it was probably from Reef straight, for Madness. <laughs> yeah, probably probably from one of their little cop websites. We hate weed. <laughs> that, that's got to be what it is because look, at, if you recall all the stats and information that he was bringing up, you know, so many kids get this, so many kids get that, but the one thing that he failed to mention is the child these kids that are getting all these other drugs their gateway is their medical cabinet in their homes well either that or the ritalin that have been fed to them by their parents either that or the adderall people don't know that ritalin and adderall are actually derivatives of, of amphetamines um what they do to you is if you're hyperactive they give you another speed on top of it and it burns you out so people that don't have adhd or add proper and they take those things they run around like they're on freaking meth interesting isn't it <laughs> the things you learn huh well speaking of las vegas okay um, the Planning Commission will be reviewing and making recommendations on special use permit applications for medical marijuana establishments on September 23rd at 3 p.m. in Council Chambers, then on September 30th, 3 p.m. in Council Chambers. Then the following month, the City Council will have special hearing dates to take action on those special use permits and license compliant permits October 28th and 29th at 9 a.m. and then November 10th at 9 a.m. So looks wow. like the end of September, beginning end of October are going to be really busy. Yeah, well, wake me up when September ends. <laughs> right. <laughs> but that's all I have on. I mean, there's nothing really going on on a local level. Statewide, one application was dropped, so the official number stands at 519 now. So did they give a reasoning behind the one application being dropped? Nothing was stated on the website, but in our newsletter coming out Friday, I'll have the breakdown of dispensaries, cultivations, the exact number, locations, and where they're at. Well, that's awesome. And um, we will be up at First Friday. Uh, we'll be up at First Friday, hopefully with um, some girls so that you can take pictures with them uh, with a backdrop. And uh, these pictures will be, uh, uh, don't I guess the money will be donated from uh, to charity for these pictures. So we're, in the, we're working on that, Raymond, you know, so you can be surrounded by the honeys. I think I always am. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what else you got going on over there, Jen? Well, you know, remember um, remember a couple of weeks ago when we talked, actually it was in July, when we talked about the L.A. Farmer's Market uh, being shut down, or actually started up on July 4th. It was like, happy Independence Day, yay, yay. Well, um, it's just been finally shut down via uh, a judge's order on Friday. Um, they say that it violates the outlaws the city's collectives in, with some exceptions. And they said that this goes against, I think, the Proposition D um, a Proposition D bill because LA residents voted to take sensible steps to limit the proliferation of medical marijuana dispensaries and we're doing just that. So I guess they see this as another way of people being able to bring their uh, their product to market. Um, I don't know. I thought it was a good idea. They also an have... Idea. Well, I think that they also have some of these um, Arizona farmers markets going on. Um, for a couple years, um, I've, I belong to a bunch of different groups nationwide so that I can just keep my fingers on the pulse of what's going on in the cannabis world. And uh, Arizona has been doing a farmer's market for a couple of years, but it's between you have to belong to this meetup and then you, you know, you go to this, uh, you know, and then you have to be like a verified patient and then go to this uh, central location. I think it's some type of private issue. So, I mean, there are always ways that you can, um, you can, you can get patient to patient access. And that's something that they really need to increase nationwide is, you know, as we're going to be having the proliferation of dispensaries and whatnot, we need to make sure that our primary concern is making that patient, making sure patients have safe access to good quality meds. Well, that's true. Not just waiting for some guy to bring you, you know, whatever they're going to bring you. And a selection. That's very important because not every strain works for every ailment. 
So these farmers markets where you can go out and you can actually see the different strains, talk to the growers and sample the different strains is, is tremendous for the patient. And that's going to be important because unfortunately, as we get these dispensaries up and running, patients are not going to be able to go into the dispensaries and sample different product basically to find out what does and what doesn't work for them. Well, you know, that's that's one thing that we'd like to do at some of our parties is that um, people that do have meds bring meds and we do have people, you know, patients that are marked and and you're marked. <laughs> that sounds horrible. You do have like a little bracelet on that says you're a patient and um, people will share with you their meds and, you know, if they have anything extra, you know, they'll give it out. Um so that we can have patient to patient access here in Nevada. We've been, we've been doing this out of necessity for a couple of years because the dispensaries have not been legal here. Um, and, and the state says that the only way that you can, um, you can get meds is by patient to patient access or growing your own. So another big thing about those parties is uh, we have a lot of different ways you can actually intake your medicine there. And there's a lot of people who come to these parties who never tried these ways and are trying them for the first time and learning about this. So it's it's a very educational experience for a lot of a lot of the patients, you know, to get to try a vaporizer for the first time instead of having to go out and spend five hundred dollars to see if this is something they want to invest in. I will tell you, you know, I, I am glad that I've had an opportunity to come go to some of our events because I've learned of so many new ways, so many healthier ways to take my medication without necessarily having to smoke it. So, I mean, who who knew about the big, big cone thing? I don't even know what it's called. Oh, a that's a, it's a volcano and they yes. have these big uh, bags and then you inhale off the bags because it's a vaporizer. But th that's what Kurt was talking about. The volcano itself, I think is 500 and something dollars. Yeah, the unit is about $500. And there's not a lot of people out there that are going to go make that investment unless they've tried tried that delivery method themselves first yeah so, i know i'm gonna make that investment after trying it <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's a much it's a much better delivery method you don't have you don't have any butane from burning it you don't have any of the ash from the from the burnt matter or anything like that it just uses a high temperature heat basically like an industrial hair dryer that blows up through the matter and and, and vaporizes and it. vaporizes the the thc off of it and fills it up in a bag and it is it is wonderful you don't cough it doesn't hurt your lungs you can actually taste the flavor of the strain. Uh, it, it really adds to the experience, and it's a much healthier way to intake your medicine. You're absolutely right. I was able to taste so many different strains, and what the good thing was is I'm, I'm not putting any names out there. Um, it's it's not my my job to, but the operator of that volcano, you know, let us know. Okay, this is what this is. This is what it's for. This is what this is. It was an educational thing. It wasn't, hi, you want to smoke? Well, yeah, not only that, um, people bring, we, you know, people bring stuff and, and tell him this is what this is and we're donating it to the party. Yeah. So it's not just him supporting the whole thing, but he does bring the, the equipment. <laughs> mm. and, and then the edibles. So many people bring so many different kinds of edibles. From uh, I remember Rice Krispie treats. I never thought about Rice Krispie treats before. Uh, my my buddy to my left right here makes some phenomenal cookies, you know. And then the brownies out there. So I mean, there's there's so many ways you can take your medication. I had some really good lemon bars. They were just oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Somebody made a bowl of rice. Oh yeah, there was a there was a, a ganja olive oil rice that one time. That was that was delicious. <laughs> so you you can pretty much turn any cuisine into in, in, you know into medicine. It's just you just got to use ganja butters and ganja oils instead of your normal butters and oils, and ta-da, you have a medicated meal. Well, hopefully our friends in New Mexico will have that opportunity because New Mexico's Attorney General supports marijuana decriminalization. Well, legalization is quite different than, uh, you know, medical marijuana. Legalization is just, you know, outright legalization. But that's good. I think, you know, I, I was recently chided by somebody in the community that hasn't been here long in the community, but, but says, oh, well, if you're supporting outright legalization, then you're... Um, then you're not with the medical patients. And I said, uh, you need to back up, Jackson. 
Because, you know, I support medical patients and because I personally support complete legalization because I don't think that there's anything harmful to the medication. If you are medicating and you need it to medicate, I honor that too. But complete legalization just means that people that are medicating without the benefit of a card are not going to get busted. That's what that means to me. That's right. And I, for one, would much rather have somebody who's had a bad day at work come home and partake in cannabis than, than drown themselves in alcohol and get into that behavior. You're 100% right. Jen, Jen and I, and even you, Kurt, had talked a number of times. We've been on Fremont and seen people getting yards of beverages. Is that what they're called? Yeah. yeah. Yards of beverages. I mean, dude, dude that fell over me had like three of those big boots. Oh, my God. You know. Das boot. <laughs> das boot. Exactly. And if he had been consuming cannabis, I don't think he would have been falling all over my wheel. I mean, really, how can you miss my big old wheelchair? <laughs> I don't know, blind drunk. And they don't even have to look big. Those those footballs that they sell out there on Fremont Street are 60 ounces. That's almost a six pack. That's five beers in one drink. I mean, seriously, does does anybody need to drink that much at at one time? And they drink five <laughs> or six of them, you know? Five and six of those? I would I would think I would I yak on one. All right, let me break down the details on this New Mexico story right quick. All right, all right, back uh, to Mexico. Uh, in Santa Fe, in the city of Santa Fe, passed a marijuana decriminalization measure this past week, uh, last week actually. The measure was passed by the city council after activists gathered enough signatures. The city council had the option to either defer and place the measure on the next election ballot, but they chose to vote on it and passed the decriminalization measure. New Mexico's attorney general, who is also running for governor, um, said that he is okay with the reform and would not stop it from being implemented. That's awesome. So, so New Mexico has got some common sense, man. Too bad some other states don't have it. <laughs> like uh, you have, you have something on um, was it Washington over there? Or you want me to find oh. that one? Yeah, no, I do have something on Washington. Uh, Washington is allowing individual cities to ban uh, to ban marijuana stores. They said that um, banning marijuana stores in municipalities are legal for recreational use. Uh, the judge's ruling came after an extensive arguing on all sides, and the case involved the attorney for the Tacoma suburbs of Fife, the attorney for a sto store owner who wants to operate in Fife, as, we as well as the uh, attorney general of Washington, who was there to protect state law. Um, so... It's all, it's all, though that's a complete legalization type of ban because Washington has legal use, but they also have medical use. So, what this is, is I think Washington people are allowed to grow like 12 to 24 plants, something crazy like that, as a medical uh, necessity. But their recreational use just came up last year, and now the municipalities are starting bans against recreational stores in the different municipalities. So let me get this straight. Mm -hmm. The voters voted to legalize marijuana in the state of Washington. These people who are elected to represent the voters are going against the wishes of the voters yeah and then you know you can do something simple in november vote them out this is still a nation of the people by the people and for the people is it not oh no raymond no, that stopped a long time ago it's for the money by the money that's the way it's been a long time in this country and, and it's such a shame you know it is one person one vote and the fact of the matter of these u.s citizens are voting for their rights you know their legal rights and regardless if it's uh, recreational or medicinal, that's what the voters of the state voted for. So these people need to abide by the wishes of their constituents, plain and simple. Yeah, and that would be the common and that would be the common sense logic to that. Well, we're going to come back with more common sense. We're going to come back with Hemp Fest tickets and more news from the cannabis world.
Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation toll free 855-420-1110 or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount 855-420-1110 or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Locally owned and operated TSI Total Safety Incorporated has kept our community safe since 1998. We provide superior services offering professional installation, local fire and burglar alarm monitoring, and the fastest response times in Las Vegas. We also offer armed and unarmed security, video security systems, access control, and fire safety installation and service. All of your security needs are covered. Call us at 702-967-0000. That's 702-967-0000 or visit us at TSIVegas.com. Las Vegas Hymnfest is here October 4th with live performances from Burns. Yeah, welcome to the Wax Room. Baby Bash. Cypress Hills Sid Dog. Dub C. Marlon Asher. New Kingston. And a surprise performance from the LBC. Fifty bands, DJs, speakers, and comics. All at the Las Vegas Hemp Fest October 4th. Get your tickets now at all Diversity Tattoo and Smoke Shop locations and at LasVegasHempFest.com. That's LasVegasHempFest.com. Brought to you by Dr. Reefer. Welcome back. That sound indicates it's time for our 420 moment, even though we're running a couple minutes late today. Stoners. 422 moment. 422 moment. We're in weed time. (laughs) <laughs> Today we're going to honor Bill Maher. I'm sure you all know who Bill Maher is. He's a television host and an activist. He serves on the advisory board for Normal, the, an organization, organization dedicated, dedicated to educating the public about the health benefits of marijuana use. Bill Maher was born on January 20th, 1956, and is an American stand-up comedian, television host, political commentator, satirist, author, and actor before his current role as the host of HBO's Real Time with Bill Maher. So so today, we'd like to honor Bill Maher. This bud's for you. Dabs up to Bill Maher. <laughs> so, and uh, we're going to give away a, a pair of hemp test Fest tickets to caller number five. Call in now at 702-731-1230 for your chance to win some tickets. Or that is 866-820-5528. Right on. And so good luck. Now, this is a timely, timely subject. The NFL is to raise THC limit for players. About time. I, is that a, is that a factual or are they questioning if they're going to do that? It looks like it says that they, um, according to the within the NFL Players Union, the NFL is discussing the possibility of lowering the threshold for a positive TH uh, test to 150 nanograms of metabolites per one mL of blood. If approved, that means the players could use cannabis pretty much up until the day before the game and still be able to pass the test essentially loosening up the league's anti-pot stance. Well, you know that's about time for this one because the NFL um, will suspend somebody for how long for a joint? Like nine games and for beating their girlfriend? Like two? Six games Chris Brown got for for violating the substance abuse policy uh, and Ray Rice got two games for knocking his wife unconscious. On camera. (laughs) On camera. Wow. All right. So, yeah, so. the uh, the penalties are a little skewed there. They're know. very and, skewed. And they, they say that, you know, that they're trying to send a message to the kids and t- teach kids, you know, and have these people be positive role models. And, you know, 
the only reason that they're getting in trouble with cannabis is, you know, the kids aren't seeing this except for the NFL drawing it out into light. But well, that's true. And the current policy sets the nanogram limit to 15 nanograms for every ml of blood. Uh, and the new limit that they're talking about is 150 mls. Uh, or 150 nanograms per ml of blood. So th- so that's a really great increase and it'll allow players to smoke up until the day before the game. Um, so that's that's really good. Yeah, and then they can choose choose a safer medication instead of all these painkillers that they're being injected with and all that other stuff that they half the time they don't even know what the NFL's squirting into them. Oh, yeah, or injecting them. And there, uh, there's another player, Josh Gordon. He was a Browns receiver. He uh, recently was suspended for a full year for testing positive at 16 nanograms per mL. Uh, Gordon's teammate, Joe Thomas, said that he isn't going to defend Gordon's actions, but he says that the NFL policy is a load of crap quote <laughs> so the nfl that's really great yeah we were just discussing where we're going to be watching the games and i think we're going to be watching them in a private venue because going to a bar and watching the game is is you know just kind of bad news for us there's too many people smoking cigarettes uh and drinking alcohol and getting obnoxious well you look guilty raymond Go pack, go! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were, we were in a bar yesterday uh, for a friend's birthday party, and it was like two o'clock in the afternoon, and I, I was just floored by the behavior of some of the people in this bar. I mean, you you could you could hear them slurring, you could tell they were obviously drunk, and it's two o'clock in the afternoon, and these people are already to the point where they can barely talk and walk. Yeah, and meanwhile, I walked out back a couple different times, and I still could walk and talk. I went to work at 6.15 this morning and noticed my neighbor just sitting on the porch drinking a beer. And I wondered, who does that at 6 o'clock in the morning? Well, obvious there's your answer, your neighbor. <laughs> okay, we have a little more New Mexico news. Are you Okay. 34,000 New Mexicans suffering from Alzheimer's are denied access to medical cannabis. They don't allow... Uh, they don't allow medical marijuana for Alzheimer's patients in New Mexico? Well, the Secretary of Health for New Mexico denied a petition to add Alzheimer's disease to the list of medical conditions eligible for the medical cannabis program, even though the New Mexico Medical Cannabis Advisory Board voted unanimously to recommend making neurodegenerative dementia, including Alzheimer's, qualifying conditions. So, well, yeah, true. unfortunately. Well, you know, the thing is that, that that is fairly recent news about Alzheimer's helping um, and being a neural protectant, you know, that, that has been mainstream. Uh, we've known it's been a neural protectant in the cannabis world for a long time, but now it's just getting out into the mainstream news that, that it's actually a neural protectant and helps uh, helps prevent the the further degeneration and spread of Alzheimer's. So, you know, hopefully they'll come to their senses. Back to some ironic news. The Arizona mayor's son is arrested again in connection with sling and dope. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Thomas J. Rankin Jr. is accused of slinging drugs in the town. Rankin Jr. is known in his hometown as Tom Tom. He was arrested this week by the... Uh, Pinal County Sheriff Offix uh, Narcotics Task Force, force, and he he was they were served two warrants against him. One of them ended up um, that they arrested him in Florence, Arizona. He possessed 19.24 grams of marijuana valued at 800 and 8.91 uh, grams of methamphetamine packaged for sale valued at about 800 bucks. Wait, 19 grams of marijuana valued at $800? That's $800 for less than an ounce? Where, where, are, they, where are they coming up with these values at? Um, it doesn't look like $20 for a gram, maybe. Are they selling, are they selling uh, cannabis for $1,000 an ounce in Arizona? I was just wondering. I mean, it would have to be at least a thousand dollars of an ounce. Let me get my phone calculator here going. Yeah, because it's I'm a like, nineteen this is grams crazy. at eight hundred dollars. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh... Well, while you figure out that number, okay. Uh, the governor of Illinois, I do it. Is the it gov- Illinois? It's Illinois. 
I, okay. I did it. I was just talking about that today, too. The governor of Illinois signed a hemp research measure into law. Pat Quinn signed House Bill 5085, authorizing state universities to cultivate industrial hemp for research purposes. The new law takes effect in January, and Illinois joins more than a dozen states, including Hawaii, my native Indiana, Nebraska, South Carolina, Tennessee, U and Utah earlier this year that, that have enacted legislation redefining hemp as an agricultural commodity, which it should be in the first place because there are no um, uh, uh, psych psychotropes. How do you say that word, Kurt? Psychotropic? Thank you. Effects from using hemp. No, there aren't. Except for probably the joy. That would be $41 a gram. This guy's selling weed at $41 a gram. You know, he deserves to get arrested. <laughs> that better be some good stuff then. Yeah, it better be tinted with gold or something. I'm not sure. So, actually, uh, no. Hemp has no psychotropic effects. So, back to the weed blog. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I got some news uh, that's been reported in the last week and a half. Uh, um, states with MMJ painkiller deaths are dropped by 25%. So, really? Yeah. This was reported by the CN staff last week. Uh, USA, uh, America has major problems with prescription prescription pain medications like Vicodin and Oxycontin, overdose deaths, overdose deaths from these pharmaceutical opioids have approximately tripled since 1991, and every day 46 people die of such overdoses in the United States. However, in the 13 states that have passed laws allowing for the use of medical marijuana between 1999 and 2010, 25% fewer people die from op opioid overdoses annually. The difference is quite striking, said study co-author Colleen Berry, a health policy research, researcher at John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health in Baltimore. The shift showed up quite quickly and has become visible the year after medical marijuana was accepted in each state, she told Newsweek. So within one year, people are less people are dying because of medical marijuana. Yeah, they're not getting all hopped up on, you know, the Vicodins and Oxycontin, you know, because your body really builds up a tolerance to that, that you have to take more and more just to get the relief from the pain and other ailments you have. Yeah, and people really do get addicted to those, not not like cannabis, you know. They, they get physical addictions to these opioids, and they can't get off of them. And I know people that have been trying and trying and trying and tell me they want to get off these pills, and they just can't. They keep turning back to them because of the physical addictions. And it's a really sad thing to watch happen. Well, when you see somebody withdrawing from a physical addiction to opiates, it's, it's quite profound. Um, there are all sorts of symptoms, body aches, of course, vomiting, and all sorts of stomach ailments that are going on. But it, you can even have seizures. People don't know that if you're actually an alcoholic, it, like a really, really deep into it alcoholic, if you stop drinking, that you'll have hallucinations and seizures and all sorts of physical withdrawal symptoms, anxiety, sweating, you know, all sorts of crazy stuff happening from, from withdrawal of alcohol. So these two... If if cannabis could could replace alcohol and painkillers in your life, then it may be a really great thing. You know, you wouldn't have those physical withdrawal symptoms of either one. And they can also help with the physical withdrawal symptoms. So if you are a cannabis patient and um, and you're going to contemplate getting off of opiates or getting uh, off of alcohol, it can help with the withdrawal symptoms of both. And I think that's important. That may be one of the reasons why people just don't transition. You know, you, you put a substance in your body long enough, your body becomes dependent upon it. Okay, well, I, you know, I've got, I've got a question. Low temp dabs versus high temp dabs. Being recently, uh, to, you know, new to the dab world, you know, I've been dabbing for a little while, but I don't do it on a regular basis. There is a new way, I guess, to do dabs. Uh, low temp dabbing is basically uh, using a lower temperature and then covering the heating source with a carb cap while inhaling. It results in a process like of confection, much like a Dutch oven, where the heat gets trapped and causes the concentrate that would normally um, 
not have enough heat to vape to completely vaporize efficiently and leading to more powerful and flavorful dabs. So do you have a preference or you just like them all? I've only dabbed four times, so I don't have a preference. <laughs> but I can tell you over in Virginia, uh, Governor Terry McAuliffe, he's the most recent governor to come out and endorse medical marijuana. He said he was open to legalizing marijuana, medical marijuana in the state. So look for Virginia, if they haven't already, to be getting a ballot initiative passed. Do you know, doesn't it, doesn't it pass for complete legalization um, in the state if you have a supermajority of the states within the United States vote for medical? No, okay, what you're, th what you're thinking about is what we've talked about, the constitutional amendment. You have to have 33 states to push for the constitutional amendment. That's two-thirds of the union. Isn't that a supermajority? No. no. Or is it past that? It's two-thirds. As long as you have two-thirds of um, your states pushing an issue, they can force it as a constitutional amendment. Okay, so we're at what, are, what, like 22 or 23 states now? Oh, no, we're, 24? we're more. I'm thinking 25, 26. I want to get the exact number, but I know someone that we were talking on the radio a couple months ago, and someone said it was like 27, but I didn't believe that, that it was that high. Well, when so many when so many new states are like jumping on board daily, and, but they haven't passed their initiatives yet, it does sound like more than have actually passed them. Right, but we're we're not at thirty three yet. No, but there are many states that have ballot initiatives coming up, and that will be coming up. So look for November to be very active, and then look for the twenty sixteen presidential campaign to be super active on it. Well, which goes back to what we we've um, advocated for a long long time if you want the change you got to be the change if you want to if you want legalization or if you want medical use then you have to go out and work you can't just sit back and get stoned and be like oh look that's what's going on and then after it's been passed come on board and go oh yay i've been here the whole time with you getting stoned on the couch yeah i'm uh uh I'm not too fond of those Johnny Come Latelys. No, I'm not really fond of the Johnny Come Latelys either. Um, but you know what? It takes everybody to make a community, and uh, we could, should kind of stick together as a community and not be, you know, dysfunctional. Not splinter off into our own little um, clicks. Exactly. I mean, we have an issue. We should come together as a community and say, "This is our issue. This is what we'd like to pursue." What can we do? What can I do for you, my friend? What can I do for you, my neighbor? I mean, that that's how it was growing up. Unfortunately, it's not like that today. Well, you know what? I, I, I kind of coined that term, the Midwest, uh, you know, Eastern Seaboard versus, you know, the West here. For some reason, it just seems like people from the East, not like New York proper, but you know what? The people ha know how to get along and say hi to their neighbors. Now, I've been all over the United States, and I've had more people just say hi random to, you know, randomly to me on the East Coast than the West Coast. I, I, I reckon that that's more of a Midwest thing. The Midwest thing, you think? Midwest, yes, ma'am. I reckon that's what it is. You want to talk about some hypocrisy, or do you want to wait till we come back from break? Well, I think that we may have uh, a winner on our... Yes, we do have a winner for our Hemp Fest tickets. We had our fifth caller. Right. Um, so winner, that's awesome. Winner, chicken dinner. Woohoo! Congratulations to. Oh, we oh, got yeah, the caller on the line. Congratulations, Great. you're the winner. Yeah, all right. Uh, who, who are we speaking with? My name is Jonathan Finkel. <laughs> oh, Finkel! Uh, Jonathan, how you doing? Hi, how's it going? <laughs> doing good. You won a pair of Hemp Fest tickets. All right. So nice. I, I know you were looking forward to going to that, so now you don't have to worry. You got your tickets, and you're ready to go. Nice. So. That's a good day. <laughs> yep. So, uh, yeah. So, um, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to seeing you guys at the uh, the weekend there and supporting you guys and everything, too. So Yeah, we're going to have a booth there. We're going to be handing out information and basically letting people know about what we do out there. And then Kurt's going to talk about unity. 
That's right. I'm actually speaking on the speaker stage. Uh, I got a 15 minute speaking slot for that. So. Oh, that's terrific. Well, I'm, I'm glad that I'll be able to see you with, uh, you know, firsthand doing what you do best. All right. Thank you, Jonathan. You got all the information? We got Jonathan's information. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we got his information. So. All right. Thank you so much for calling in. We have our winners for the Hemp Fest tickets. And now what were we going to talk about? Hypocrisy? A hypocrisy or break? I think we should go on a break and then we can come back and talk about hypocrisy. When we come back, we'll talk about the federal government asking for applications to grow marijuana. Oh. All right. Green Spot Hydroponics is a Las Vegas-based distributor of specialty indoor and outdoor gardening supplies. Locally owned and operated with over 3,000 square feet of inventory. Expert and friendly staff to help with all your growing and hydroponic needs. Our pricing and service will not be beat. We help you grow. 3355 Westlake Mead Boulevard, just behind the Texas station. Mention we can and receive 10% off. Call us at 702-463-6000. That's 702-463-6000. You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702-218-5226 or Kurt, K-U-R-T, at WeCan702.org. Do you need help getting your Nevada medical marijuana card? Dr. Reefer is now accepting new patients. There are no medical records required. We have a doctor on staff to give you a thorough physical examination. There is a 99% approval rate for patients. They also have a money back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Free consultation is available. Call 702-428-0000. 702-428-0000. To get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. Welcome back, everybody. This is Jennifer Solis, Raymond Fletcher, and Kurt Dukoch for Nevada Cannabis News. We have some hypocrisy going on. We had, well, we gave away Hemp Fest tickets, and we have a little bit more news for you. So, Raymond, what's the hypocrisy? Well, as we know, the federal government grows marijuana at the University of Mississippi, and it has for many, many decades. The marijuana is used to supply only for federal medical marijuana patients and for recent research. Now, there are only like, what, two left alive? I think it was originally seven and there's four left. Okay. Well, recently the federal government approved a proposal to go from a quota of, are you ready for this? Okay. 21,000 grams up to 650,000 grams. Per what? Month? I guess so. It's not. It doesn't tell me if it's a month or whatnot. The federal government is currently accepting applications to land a contract to grow marijuana for the federal government. Now here, check this out. This is our government using yours, 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 all our tax money to grow marijuana. Yep. Then they're going to turn around and say, nope, it's not medication. According to the National Institute of Health and all the other government agencies, it's not medication. Yet we're going to use your tax money to grow six, 650,000 grams of marijuana. Oh, my. But it's still legal for you. You, you, and everybody. Well, you know, the, 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 the hypocrisy is great within America, not just on cannabis, but on many different uh, levels. The levels where they want to take away, um, they want to take away aid to people who really need it, but give corporate welfare to people who make billions. I think that's a bigger hypocrisy. Um, but you know what? Cannabis is my fight this week. You're absolutely right. The National Institute on Drug Abuse, <laughs> they intend to solicit proposals uh, from off from people having the ability to cultivate, harvest, process, analyze, store, and distribute for research. They want to extract cannabis to produce pure and standardized 
uh, manufacturing practices. So how are you going to have standardized manufacturing practices when it's a scheduled one controlled substance? Well, you know, I don't know. Their whole thing, uh, I guess, is that we want to do it, but you can't. It's okay for us, but you guys can't do this. Um, or, or do they want to get so far ahead in the research that they patent that stuff too before anybody else can? Because you know the federal government owns a bunch of different patents for cannabis. And I think that's, you know, hypocritical also. So, you know, talk yeah. about you know, after all, cannabis is as dangerous as heroin and crack and everything else on Schedule 1. <laughs> well, it's LSD. You know, I've never seen anybody jones for LSD. <laughs> uh, that's just a, on my point, anyway. You know, people jones for heroin. Hey, if you are interested, I'm going to give this address out. If okay. you're interested in being one of the people to cultivate, grow, manufacture, distribute, or any of those other fun things. Trader? No. <laughs> we cannot do. Please contact 6001 Executive Boulevard, room 4211. It'd be funny if it was room 420. <laughs> MSC 9551, Bethesda, Maryland. 2892. So basically what they want to do is get a jump on all of the standardized practices so that they can they can patent them. They're, you're going to be an independent contractor underneath them and any manufacturing process that you have that, uh, that you allow them to use is then going to be their proprietary mm -hmm. information. So they're going to steal your crap, patent mm -hmm. it, and then tell you that you can't benefit off of it. That's what they do to, to scientists you know that they have a great contest for scientists where people like over 200,000 people submit these different applications to the government for to win a contest and what the contest ends up being is let's see all of your stuff so that we can you know copy it and which is crazy and so this is I would think this is more of the same they're gonna get your proprietary information they're gonna have you do the research on it they're going to have you sign a contract and then they're going to patent your work because it's their work product that you created under your contract with them yeah it do doesn't matter if you had proprietary stuff before you have signed up with them because you're gonna end up signing your rights away so I don't know if I trust the government does it sound like I'm distrustful of the government? Hey, I don't trust them. Look at Prohibition. First they ban alcohol, then I'm like, oh, wait a minute, you can drink. Hey, I want to get back to your NFL story for a quick, quick hot second. Sure, sure. Uh, Josh Gordon from the Cleveland Browns, his yeah. suspension was for one year. I know. One I year. thought you said uh, a couple months. Well, well no. it was originally six weeks, and then they moved it to a year, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so which is crazy. Yeah, my bad. I was just well, you know, it is a performance enhancing drug. It <laughs> is. I mean, it, there's no doubt about it. I I function much better when I'm on it because I don't hurt. So when you feel good, you do better at everything, right? You yeah, absolutely on that. So truly, it is a performance enhancing drug because you're good. I don't know, you guys. The Olympics ruled that it was not a performance enhancing drug, especially to the people that did what. Um, would uh... well, explain Michael Phelps then. Hey. <laughs> you can't stop the guy in the water. There's got to be a reason, right? They put it. a butt on the other end of the pool. <laughs> he's killing it in the water, and then when he's out, you see him taking bong rips. That's awesome. Well, of course, he's got to use a water pipe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Would you expect anything else? <laughs> there is some there are some stupid people in south dakota <laughs> the medical marijuana protest is planned for a south dakota state fair i'm not even saying any more on that one Again. well that's kind of intriguing now i want you to see <laughs> that one they're protesting in, uh, there and then in colorado they're actually having cannabis at the state fair <laughs> Well, South Dakota is not a populous state, and it's not considered to be a leader when it comes to marijuana reform. However, that doesn't mean that South Dakota's marijuana laws don't need fixing. It certainly doesn't mean that there aren't hardworking activists in the state. They're planning a protest at the upcoming South Dakota State Fair. Well, I was wondering, is, where is Sturgis held? It's in Florida. 
No, it's not. Sturgis is not in Florida. Um, yes, yes, it, it is. is. <laughs> oh my God, she looks. She has the blonde are, look. No, you guys are idiots. Neither one of you are right. It's the place where it's the place where it's like South Dakota, isn't it? No, it's it's. Uh, uh, you know what? I I want to get my I want to get my my tech person on that. I'm gonna, Thank you, Lawrence, because you I'm know what? Have Sturgis, to Google that. <laughs> Sturgis is not in Florida. You guys, you said where they have it. You guys it. are cray cray. Both of you are cray cray. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, don't you anyway? <laughs> I'm looking this up, man. Supporters of medical marijuana, industrial and industrial hemp, are planning on staging a protest at the state fair. Uh, <laughs> members of South Dakotans Against Prohibition have requested noise and parade permits to march. Sturgis is in South Dakota, you guys. I knew it. And this is crazy because Sturgis is like the biggest biker bash annually ever, ever. So how can you see that, you know, they're going to go protest? And they need all those Sturgis guys back there. You know, all the bikers back there. I bet they, they'll they say that they won't protest. No, nah, they'll be too drunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, those bikers are crazy. <laughs> Speaking of cray-cray, right? Yeah. So we all know what's been going on over in, uh, in Missouri with, you know, the Michael Brown incident over there. A uh, couple of... No, what? You don't know what's going on over there? No, what's going on with the Michael Brown incident? Where the police shot an arm, unarmed man with his arms in the air. Ferguson. Oh, Ferguson. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, well, Michael Brown, uh, they found marijuana in his system when he died, according to the Washington Post. And that's news why? <laughs> exactly. This development should not have come to a surprise to anyone who's ever been, been or known a teenager, but some still expected the toxi to toxicology report to be a bombshell. It isn't. <laughs> uh, in an extreme case, a single person who has uh, reportedly regularly used marijuana for about 10 years still tested positive almost 70 days after last using it, according to the NDCI. So while some studies have found higher marijuana use among criminal, criminal offenders, the presence of THC in their systems is often circumstantial rather than a contributor to the behavior itself. Even if Brown was high or recently had used marijuana, there is little evidence to suggest that it would have been, that he would have been more aggressive or confrontational when approached by a police officer. So, huh? Well, so once again, they're trying to blame pot for something. Yeah, well, they're trying to distract from the real story. The fact that he did an armed robbery, ran from police, didn't listen to police orders, and he ended up shot trying to do whatever he was to that officer. Yeah. Yeah, he sold a candy, stole like what was it, a candy bar or something? I don't remember. I don't even remember what he sold, but yeah. yeah. And when when they shot him, he had his hands in the air. What what did he do? He also uh, put his hands on the clerk that of the store that he was stealing from. Yeah, he pushed the clerk out of the way on the way out of the store. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you know how I am about police violence, especially here in Las Vegas. I mean, it's unnecessary for the most part. Um, you know, there have been, tw but you know, on the good note, there's been only 12 shootings this year. And I think that's been down from uh, last year for the Las Vegas police. That's 12 too many. It is 12 too many, but only six died. <laughs> Well, well, don't forget, we will be up at First Friday this Friday. Where, Kurt? Uh, right in front of the Artifice. In between the Arts Factory and the Artifice. And we'll have a booth. So if you'll come out there, I think that we're going to have uh, some 420 models and some a backdrop. If you guys want to get your picture taken with some hot chicks, come on out First Friday and visit us. Uh, we have our pool party at the 3rd. A weekend of the month. Fourth Sunday. Fourth, Fourth Sunday of the month. And we have a normal potluck picnic on September 20th. And we have a patient's first meeting, not this Saturday, but the following Saturday. So in, in two weeks. So like our Facebook page, join us on Meetup, and you'll be connected to everything. Until then, we'll be back next week. And be safe, everybody. Have a good night.